Now we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about the domain and vertical asymptotes of rational functions. So we'll work through a couple different examples together so that you feel comfortable and so that we get used to different looks of rational functions. The basic idea of rational functions is they involve fractions, particularly they're going to involve um, the variable in the denominator. So let's say we just have a function like f of x equals 2x over x plus 5. So if we were asking ourselves what is the domain of the function, um, the way I like to remember it is the domain is tied to the denominator. So domain denominator. So it's, it's almost as if this numerator term does not matter at all um, for the sake of the domain discussion. Of course, it would impact, you know, graphing and plotting points and that sort of thing. And there could be times when maybe they're simplifying in the function. But in this case, 2x over x plus 5 doesn't simplify. So all I'm going to do is snag the denominator and talk a little bit about what makes it equal to 0. So if I set the denominator equal to 0, we know that would cause us to divide by 0, which in math is a big problem. Um, since it's undefined. So the value of x equals negative 5 would cause that problem to occur. So for that reason, the domain will be all values other than negative 5. So we can express our domain in a couple different ways. You can take your pick. Those of you who like set builder notation, you're going to tell me all x are good as long as x does not equal to that value of negative 5. So that's a good set builder notation. For my interval folks, we need to express all real numbers but negative 5. So we start at the smallest number imaginable. We butt right up against negative 5, but we jump over it. And then we continue to the biggest number possible. So that would be the interval notation for the domain. So for this rational function, if you were to graph it, you would see that the function avoids all x val the x value of negative 5, I should say. Now, I'd like to really um, make the connection clear between domain and vertical asymptote, because whatever the domain excludes, that is the vertical asymptote. So whenever we set the bottom to 0 and solve, the resulting equation or equations would be the vertical asymptote or asymptotes. So in this particular example, the domain is everything but negative 5, so the vertical asymptote is negative 5. And again, check out the graph and you'll see. Um, you could basically draw that vertical line at negative 5 and the graph will avoid that line. So maybe I'll just graph this one real quick so you can just keep enhancing your visual and then we'll try a few more examples. Let me grab that graph for you. So graphically, this is what that function looks like. And as we kind of said out loud, uh, at x equals negative 5, you see that the graph is avoiding this line. It's never going to touch it. So coming from the left, it shoots up this way towards positive infinity. And then as we approach negative 5 from the other side, we're shooting down towards negative infinity. And actually, we discuss this behavior a lot more in calculus for those of you who go on to take more math. But for our purposes here, again, what we're looking at is really can we define the domain and can we define the vertical asymptote when given a rational function? Let's try another one. Let me make a slightly more complicated rational function. So this time we'll work with f of x equals, and let's say we have x plus 1, and we're dividing by, um, how about x squared minus 8x plus 15? So again, just another rational function, same goal in mind. Let's find the domain. Let's find the vertical asymptotes. So a good starting point always is related to the denominator. So domain is tied to denominator. And by setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving, we'll find the values that the domain can't include, which would then be the values that the vertical asymptote or asymptotes is or are. So um, the reason I'm using singular versus plural is in the last example, we only had one value that was problematic, but as you look at this equation, you're noticing x squared minus 8x plus 15, that's quadratic, so it will have two solutions, in which case we'll have two vertical asymptotes. So let's find what they are. I'm just going to use the technique of factoring. Um, the denominator was strategically made so that it factors. We don't have to do anything too crazy. 
So two numbers that multiply to 15 at the end while summing to negative 8 in the middle sound to me like negative 3 and negative 5. So again, you can always make a full list of ways to multiply to 15. And then we're just selecting the pair that also sums to the number in the middle. So every time we factor, I just want to kind of refresh you a little bit on that, that technique. So negative 3 and negative 5 was the pair that summed to the middle term of negative 8. All right, so from that point in our solving process, we can tell either, right, we have a, a product of factors equal to 0. So either x minus 3 equals 0, which means x is 3, or x minus 5 is 0, which means x is 5. These values, I guess you're probably connecting from our first example, these values are the vertical asymptotes. And it's really good to write vertical asymptotes as equations. So they're the equations of the vertical lines that the function will avoid. So this is a new term. We know um, in unit one we talked about domain of rationals, but we didn't talk about it with the vertical asymptote discussion included. So this may make the domain feel a little bit more clear to us. So it's almost like I find the vertical asymptotes and then the domain can be easily stated as everything but those values, if you like to think of it that way. So let's state our domain. Uh, I'm going to write it in those two notations again. So for set builder, I can say all x are good such that, that's our nice little vertical bar, such that x does not equal the two values we just found, which were 3 and 5. So all x except for 3 and 5. My interval notation, folks, this is where it takes a little bit more work because I have to make sure I jump over 3 and 5. So interval notation would run from the smallest number imaginable up until 3. Then we'll just skip over 3, keep going until we hit 5, jump over 5, keep going until we hit the biggest number imaginable. So either one of those notations would be great for the domain. Please take your pick based on your preference. So that's another example of finding domain and vertical asymptotes. So really they go hand in hand. Let's try another one. Just trying to make sure in this video we cover all the possibilities you may encounter because sometimes you'll see one that feels a little different. You could feel stuck. So what if I gave us just a function like uh, 2x plus 3 divided by x? So it's still a rational function. We've got a variable in the denominator. But the denominator feels a little bit uh, more simple, right? And that's okay. Sometimes more simple problems can uh, t tend to cause a little bit more confusion. But same process as the last two examples. Snag the denominator, set it to zero, and solve. So the only difference is here when I solve, uh, when I set x to zero, the solving's really already done. So the vertical asymptote here will be the equation x equals zero. And if that's what the vertical asymptote is, the domain is going to be everything but that. So from a set builder notation, my domain will be all x such that x does not equal to 0. From an interval notation perspective, go from the smallest number imaginable to 0, jump over it, and pick back up and go to the biggest number imaginable. So maybe that one seems a little bit more straightforward. Um, there's not as much to do, but uh, again, I know sometimes the more simple problems can be like, wait, is there something more I need to worry about? So this one truly is just that simple. Setting the bottom to zero was already solved. That value was then excluded from the domain. And again, feel free to graph this in Desmos and just take a peek. You'll be able to see that the graph is avoiding the line x equals zero. All right, I'm going to squeeze in one last example, and then we will call it good for this one. What if I gave you a function f of x equals, uh, how about x plus 7 divided by 3? So if I asked if this is a rational function, I think a lot of people would say yes. You know, it feels like a fraction. We understand rationals are fractions, so maybe I'll roll with, with that answer for a moment. Uh, if we apply the same technique of the past three examples, we're going to snag the denominator, which is 3. We're going to set it equal to 0, and we're going to solve. But when we set 3 equal to 0, notice there are no 
variable terms. And the statement 3 equals 0 is false, right? It's not a true statement. Uh, in other words, it won't happen, right? That's a little bit more informal. But there is no value that will make the denominator equal 0 because the denominator is just a constant. It doesn't involve the variable x. So in other words, there are no problems, right? There are no values that cause issues. So for this reason, this problem is actually a little bit of a sneaky problem. Um, the domain is actually all real numbers because it's not even technically a rational function as we understand them, right? In the, in the first video, we talked about rationals involve variables in the denominator. So let me just go ahead and write the domain and then we'll say one more thing. I could say all x such that x is a real number. That means we can use any real numbers, no problems, no restrictions. Or for my interval folks, this is a nice one. We just say negative infinity to infinity. So I just like to bring this example up because maybe you'll see it in a homework or a quiz or something like that. But at times, you may be given a function that at face value appears to be rational. But if you dive in a little bit more, you'll discover, oh, it's actually just a, a, a more simple function, right? So because there was no variable in the denominator, the function I gave you in this problem was actually just linear. So let me break that down a little bit more. If I use my knowledge of fractions, I know that dividing the two terms in the numerator by 3 could be thought of as just dividing both the x and the 7 by 3. And maybe that still looks a little weird. So if I remember that x over 3 can just be written as 1 third x, I now have this function rewritten in a form that probably will look more familiar to you guys, you guys as the y equals mx plus b form. So this is actually just a linear function. It's just a straight line. And if you think back about straight lines, right, they look kind of like this. The domain of a linear function would be all real numbers. So just a little thing to watch out for. Um, we tend to deal more with actual rational functions um, in homework and quizzes. So, all right, I think that's it. I hope you feel pretty good on domain uh, and vertical asymptotes. So um, just to note for this problem, there are no vertical asymptotes because no values of x will make the denominator equal zero. All right.